we recently shifted to a bigger house and long time due i had to switch from the lg smart tv to something better so i got myself an android tv and we here at techwiser use android boxes like xiaomi mi box and nvidia shield tv and like every other android product this has a lot of potential under the hood so this is prateek from techwiser.com and let's see how to use android tv to the full potential but before that i would like to thank our sponsor for this video air console air console is a cloud based gaming platform that lets you play single player and multiplayer games using your android smartphone as a controller and you should use it just for the sake of beating your colleagues and shaming them and guess what air console is also available for android tv so you can play some fun games with your friends and family check it link in the description below with that said let's check out some cool android tv apps Now the real edge of Android TV over Fire Stick is gaming. Of course you can play high end games like Asphalt and Dead Trigger 2 with your Bluetooth controller, but I rather prefer playing those classic games like Super Mario and Contra, you know, good old video game days. So you can use an emulator like Retro Arch for this. though if you prefer a modern classic you can still stream that too from your pc using apps like steam link one that i would really recommend is the hollow knight most android tvs have chromecast built in so you can mirror your android screen but what if you have to mirror your laptop so air screen lets you connect your laptop to the android tv it supports the most wireless transmission protocols and thus works from an android to a macbook windows everything air screen works seamlessly and currently is the best option one of the cool thing about android boxes like mi box or shield tv is the hdmi cec support what does it do well say if you lose your mi box remote in future or is just too lazy to pick it up from the table then you can use the tv remote to control pretty much all aspects of mi box for example here i have set up the lg remote to navigate in the mi box i can open netflix go back well pretty much all the basic navigations and functions work just make sure you enable hdmi cc on your mi box as well as your tv most television these days have it they just use a different name like In my LG TV it's Simplink. Once done, you should be able to control your Android box with the TV remote. And here's the best app of all. As soon as I get back home, I just drop my phone to charge and there goes my couple of hours on the TV. Meanwhile, I miss out on a lot of calls and notifications. So I use this app called Notifications for Android TV which obviously pushes the notifications from my phone to the tv the notification is unintrusive appearing only on the bottom right and doesn't spoil the tv experience and while we are talking about connectivity within the android system here's an app called wifi file explorer most android tv boxes come with a usb board to let you transfer files but what about larger files like movies or games or in case you don't have a usb stick well just download wifi explorer app Once done, open the Wi-Fi Explorer app and you will see the IP address. The good thing is the web portal can be accessed on any browser, so you can send files either from your mobile or laptop. Say I have this huge TW team video on my laptop, so I just drag and drop it here. And done. Another amazing thing is the file transfer works in the background, so while the video is being transferred, you can still enjoy stranger things on your TV. And once you have completed the episode, go back to the file manager to find your transferred video. But what if you have movies on your hard drive and not your phone? Well, here's an app called Microsoft XFAT NTFS Viewer. Windows PC mostly formats the external hard drive using NTFS, and even memory sticks on hard drive are on XFAT file system. So if you want to view those on the TV you wouldn't need a XFAT NTFS viewer 
while the app is paid, you can still avail a two-day trial for one-time usage. There is no good file manager inbuilt onto the Android TV, just like the phone. And while you can download any file explorer, I would recommend Explore. It doesn't have one of the best looking UI, but it does come with the paint view, which really utilizes the large screen. Also, you can map your Google Drive or OneDrive. So when your NTFS viewer trial runs out, you can use Google Drive to upload data from your mobile and access it on your Android TV from here. Another thing which I hated on the Android TV is the web browser. It's not optimized for the big screen and I just cannot live with it. So I switched to Puffin TV and the world is now a better place. The best thing is it is customized for the large screen, which in my opinion, Chrome should have been. And that is essentially the basic feature of any TV web browser. And not only the big screen view, but the navigation is extremely fluid with the cursor just floating around. The best thing is the websites that open is well optimized. But let's be honest, you ain't here to read articles. So you can watch videos as well. Typing is still a pain in the back. So you can use an Android remote. What really separates Puffin TV from other browsers is quick shortcuts for popular websites. And yes, if you are paranoid about your browsing history, you can either delete it or set up a web log. And you know what's a better way to watch movies? Place it on a central device and then stream it on your TV. Plex Media Server lets you do that. In our case, this Android TV. With the easiest setup, you can just watch your movies, images without the hassle of file transfer. Plex supports all the media formats and converts it to the best viewable format on the fly. Another major feature of Plex is the add-ons such as theater trailers, which lets you watch trailers airing in cinema halls. Well, there are also other popular uses of Plex that you will eventually figure out, but we are not gonna go there. And talking about movies, VPN app lets you expand your movies library irrespective of the geographic location. There are many VPN apps like NordVPN, ExpressVPN or SmartDNS Proxy. We don't endorse any VPN apps, but here's a YouTube card to let you know which one to choose. For example, recently I watched The Office on Hotstar, the Indian one, and that really intrigued me and I wanted to check out The Office US. And unfortunately, it's not available on Netflix India. So I just turn on the VPN, go back to Netflix and there you go. And not just Netflix, VPN apps help you to remove geo restrictions on any video site such as Hulu, Sling TV and HBO. Android TV launcher clean, minimal, and the assistant. All works good, but here's the deal. Suppose I wanna launch a handheld app like Smart DNS Proxy to change my location. So that requires me to go here. One, two, three, still can't see it. Can't see the app. That's it. You just can't see the app. Now, if you replace this with HL Launcher, things get pretty easy. You move from this clutter of Hotstar and Netflix recommendation to a minimal layout that shows you only your installed Android TV apps as well as the handheld ones. The best thing about the app is you can customize each and every setting. But two of my favorite ones is the background and app list customization. So these were some of the neat tips and tricks to make the most out of your Android TV. Do try these one out and while you're at it, let me know what Android TV you use or just a regular TV with a streaming device like Fire Stick, Chromecast. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and well, catch you guys later.